All right, welcome everyone. Oscar, you've got the boring screen on. Yep, there we go. Hey. Um, welcome to the Constitution Workshop on DAOs, very foundational. Um, Oscar is, is here again, we'll run it. Liam and Patty here, thanks for coming guys. This is recorded. Um, we'll keep it quite crisp today. I don't like long intros, um, but I think this is just very important um, for society. I think this is much more easy thing with crypto things. I hear a lot of people into crypto. I think, yeah, great. Um, a lot of people think about it in a short-term way, engaging with it. I think the real value is the long-term. It's very powerful concepts, this stuff long-term. So just keep that in the back of your mind, long-term applications, long-term use, not how can I use this the next couple of weeks. Um, but Oscar, I'll hand over to you to, to progress through and let's just get into it. All right, let's do it. Uh, so today we'll be covering what's a DAO and where it already exists in the mobile world and how how the, the crypto technology, the blockchain technology has sort of developed a lot of competitive advantages for, for us to utilize uh, versus sort of the, the legacy apparatuses that we've become familiar with. Uh, and second part, as you can see, we'll be going over the applications uh, very relevant to, to anybody who, who has a focus on living an intentional life. That there's definitely a lot of opportunities out there. Uh, fun, passion, money making, all of the above. They, yeah, they investing, to make quite well. community building. Yeah. Um, a cause you care about and the best, a new powerful way to do something about it. And that's just scratchy. Uh, an art project, funding a project alternative to the odds, maybe in some cases alternative to the startup model in some respects, these are all valid and potential applications, which is crazy. Okay. We're talking about one technology that can be used in all these different ways. So yeah, it's big. <laughs> all right. Before we start, a little shout out to myself. <laughs> Visit the weatherman website at uh, www.oscarwavy.com and uh, we, we've got an episode of N about NFTs, a podcast episode up right now, and there'll be more coming soon. So that, that, that'll be a good place to go deeper into yeah. all that. A final disclaimer that this is all just uh, this yeah. is investing advice. Right? Right, investing advice. Yeah. Let's just get uh, enter at your own risk. Enter at your own risk. Cool. All right. What's a DAO? Stands for Decentralized Autonomous Organization. And... It's a technology that allows a community to collaborate on how to deploy their shared capital towards a defined mission, right? So I'll pause there. Liam, I know I won't pick on Pat, but Liam, I know we've talked before a little bit about this. Mm -hmm. What's your understanding? Be, be willing to be wrong, obviously. I know you're on recording, but be brave and willing to be wrong. It's completely fine. But what is your understanding of this concept, the, the DAO, the Decentralized Autonomous Organization? Um, I think it's people get incentivized within the community that they have like a share and as they like say participate or they do something that can go depending on how the organization is doing it can go up or down so you like buy in to the like when you buy into the community say if you pay your subscription fee of $200 that $200 is then like a percentage of the community itself so say you own like one or two or three percent or whatever it is. And then depending on how the community does, that goes up or that your value of that goes down. Cool. cool. And, and Pat, have you had, I don't know, have you had any exposure to this before? Have you had zero exposure? Do you have any inclination of what this is? Uh, yeah, very close to zero. Amazing. Fantastic. All right, Oscar, going off Leon's definition there, or like, you know, he's understanding what it is. Um, work with that how do we understand what this this thing is from a high level yeah that's definitely one of the foundational parts of it but i think the real value out of DAOs, uh on top of the sort of the financial share of whatever your cause you're invested in the 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 uh the added sort of benefit is the community and the ability to contribute to the direction of the of the organization so you can propose things you can vote on proposals and any any holder can really do that in most DAOs. some some vary on their constitution on what's allowed but 
the general theme is that any holder of the, of the token in the DAO can vote on proposals to, to move the project forward. All right. So I don't know if it's clear at this point yet. Yeah. What's next? Do you have examples and stuff? Because first I want to establish. A bit yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. Go through these. Yeah, so we've got the, the Muggle World examples, right? And the, the way some, so the ones on the left, the publicly listed user generated content, the way they work is you develop your own content. You start really from ground zero. You don't really have ownership in the company, but usually they give you a, a revenue of the ad share, right? But you, you don't really have much decision-making process on how that circumstance change uh, changes in the long term. You're, you're not really given a, a share in the in the vision of the company, really, just the, the part of the profits or a part of the revenue. But so at the same time, I just want to distinguish. I go on Instagram, I can make 100 amazing posts and that's, that's enriching content on Instagram. Separately, I or someone else can buy shares in Facebook or Spotify or any of these platforms and get the, the dividends and all that, right? Obviously, they're so big that even AGMs and all that, the way publicly listed companies work that are on the share market, you can, uh, you know, get, you know, invest in them, get a bit of their profits. You're not going to have much autonomy in there, obviously. Um, but also it's a separate to, you don't really ever get shares, YouTube or Spotify or anything like that. They might give you a portion of Spotify and YouTube. And I think TikTok has got a paid program now. I know Instagram doesn't have anything really, um, but you'll never get, you know, a revenue kickback from Instagram or Facebook, unless you're just paying to do ads on there, right? And that's, that's the way you monitor. So they're not going to reward you for making their platform really great yet, but people can separately do that. What we're moving to the DAOs as a concept will often be smaller than these major big companies, but I just want to generate the concept of you generate value for this thing, but you can also get directly re rewarded back for that value you create. So if I made an Instagram sort of DAO, it would be like if you were putting, I might reward people who would put enriching pretty photos on there directly with an NFT or they get access to this event or they get a certain amount of IG coins or something like that. So that's that side. That's why we want to talk about those because that's the big shift. Now, okay, so, yeah. so Joe, with that, the only thing that um, Instagram has, which is more just like a status symbol, which doesn't really count is like the blue tick. Like people get the blue tick and then that's about it. Yeah. So the, the power of say DAOs, especially because they'll use NFTs in the previous session we did, which is on the YouTube channel or in the concert student community space is that the NFTs one that goes well with this. Mm -hmm. um, you probably can get an NFT, particular NFT, right? In concert student, you might get the one and only doorman NFT and that can symbolize your status. That might be the equivalent of a blue tick on Twitter or, or Instagram. Right. And that's what that blue tick is. It's a status thing. And NFTs in the DAO world will be uh, at, at this point in time, that big kind of blue tick equi equivalent symbolizes your status in the community. All right. Yeah. Oscar, back to you. Uh, do, do you want to flesh out co-ops? I feel like you're stronger on that. I just have well, a question with the, yep, uh, what we just talked about. Yep. So are you saying like the status versus like the value? the DAO, DAO provides you. So like obviously a blue tick, like you can't really sell, or maybe you can't sell like a verified Instagram no, you account. Can't. No, you but can't. like is the oh. is this is the other one worth money? Well in saying that Cristiano Ronaldo like sells his image rights and stuff, but separately to that, it mm. can it can be worth something. Right? It it'll depend on how that organization is set up yeah i think normally it'll be more about um if you hold Access. an nft it'll give you benefits yeah. or it'll give you status uh, yeah. i haven't seen many examples where people have been working away so they can sell a particular like yeah nft within a DAO or something. but there's no reason why that can't happen in the future but this this is like early evolving space and i haven't yeah i haven't come across the use cases um yeah 
Um, so on, on co-ops, so co-ops are kind of an example of this concept existing organically almost like it's, it's very similar to a DAO, but it's obviously not in the crypto world or using blockchain technology, but, um, visa is a good example. So the way visa started, and if no one knows what visa is half the cards, you have credit cards or, you know, be visa cards often uh, mastercard visa, Amex. And it was basically uh, banks uh, in America. I think it started with Bank of America. The, the kind of credit card services was to actually get a whole bunch of banks together to actually create the whole credit card service. So they all cooperated and they formed a co-op together. So like all these competing banks, they, none of them wanted like any uh, credit card services to be too expensive because it would blow out their bottom line. So if, I was the only company offering them uh, credit cards. And I had a monopoly, kind of like how YouTube has a monopoly on videos or Google has a mo monopoly on search engine or Spotify has a monopoly on music. In theory, I could charge them whatever I wanted. So these banks all got together and formed a co-op. Visa is not a co-op anymore, but it was, yeah, it's kind of like a joint, it was like a teaming up because they all had aligned interests. So they actually all formed this co-op. None of them could have done it on their own. And that's a really powerful example of what collaboration can really do when there's this incentive alignment. It also benefits customers because if it's very expensive for banks, then instead of like a 2.5% charge, it might be, it was like a 6.5% or I don't know what it was. So that's the value in that visa. So visa is the most famous example of a co-op. There's lots of co-ops that we just don't realize. Um, and that's really interesting. So the concept is not always new. Often the technology is creating better ways to uh, interact with these concepts, I think. So I'll pass back to you there, Oscar. Yeah. Okay. So, so the main difference between so the mother world and the, and the new world is the, the positive sum act, right? The win-win scenarios, there's incentive alignment between contributing to a platform or to an organization and, and uh, sort of receiving uh, sort of benefits in the end game for that organization. You, you receive the benefits of the bottom line directly. And you also have a say in how, uh, how that organization moves forward, which again, as we went over before, didn't really happen, especially with those sort of creator uh, based uh, Companies. platforms yeah like youtube spotify right so yeah the the scale the scale of these companies definitely reveals the the deficiencies and it creates the principal agent problem you know we see sort of the deficiencies of capitalism here where companies grow too big uh they sort of go away from their organic roots of more accountability and sort of open open forums and more community uh, driven, right? We've definitely seen this with YouTube, Apple, and Facebook, and they've sort of moved towards uh, very extrin extrinsic benefits, like when's the next, what's gonna drive a, a bump in ad revenue and of share and some, price. Yeah, share price. Monopoly market position. Amazon is very aggressive as well. Amazon shuts down a lot of people's businesses and sets up a similar store to that person directly selling what they were selling. Yeah. Um, they, cause it's kind of, I don't know if this point is really clear, Oscar, explain the principal agent problem specifically. Well, it's, it's basically when, uh, the, the power breakers of any given organization, uh, make a decision that would probably benefit themselves, which sort of goes against the, the moral cause or the organic, and no purpose of the, of the company. Well, I'd say specifically it's the distance. It's how far away they are. So right. if I deal with a local business and a lawyer, like that runs their local business, that lawyer runs that business. They're like so accountable, right? Cause if, yeah. they, if their business suffers, they, they suffer a lot financially yeah. and reputation. If I deal with one of the big law firms and they just give me a junior that doesn't own anything in the company. I'm very far away from the people who have the most invested in that actual company. Okay. And so the employee um, has much less to lose. So in many cases, not that money and owning equity is the only incentive to do a good job, 
but in many cases you won't actually get that good quality work out of a small person from a big organization because yeah. they don't have that accountability. You really, the person who will care the most is probably the, but they get further and further away from you as something like this grows. So most companies that become quite big and take advantage of scale suffer this problem. Facebook is like an easy one to bash, right? Yeah. Uh, but even Apple, Apple was faced a lot of criticism over the years for its supply chain, right? Like where they get there, where everything gets manufactured and stuff. And supply chain is very complicated now. You know, like there's a lot of fuss around that. Like where do parts get made from these things we're using every day? Child labor. Slant. There's, so that's not the whole point. This is just a bit of the, like the value of this in society. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's the feedback loop gets broken because people are not accountable anymore. Like Amazon can get away with stuff. Facebook can get away with a lot of stuff still because of how big they are. They, they're becoming bigger than nation states, but they're not the only examples. Anyway, let's, let's move on. Right. We sort of just touched on this. Yep. Right. Same concept with government. Yeah, absolutely. The more local it is, the, the more people feel the pain and the more accessible they are, the more the incentives line up to, to sort of act in good faith and in interest of the broader community. And as that scales up, that, that feedback loop lessens. Yeah. Like, for example, we've got people who, um, and I hope like if there's anyone on this call, it's all good. But when there's COVID benefits, people who don't need the benefits go, or they take advantage of Centrelink benefits when they don't need them because there's not accountability and all that. Whereas if it was in a tribal, if we were giving people in constant student a little loan, it'd be much, it'd be, there'd be much less people taking loans they didn't need or, or stuff like that. And there'd also be less decisions made that are not in the best interests of like the community because the smaller it is, the easier it is to do that. That's the yeah. basic concept we, we're getting at here. Any questions so far? Uh, All good. Cool. Back to the Muggle World example. So we got the publicly traded companies and we also included the early stage companies in terms of how, how a DAO is really manifested in the investing space, right? So with the early stage, the problem really is the higher barrier to entry. But again, investors do have uh, sort of lots of say on the direction of the company, I'd say, right? And some of the problems that can arise from that is that they become intensely uh, profit motivated, I'd say. I'd say that that's, a, that's consistent across all of these mediums. And with the publicly listed companies, investors really have a muted voice. They can't really communicate well with each other. It's not really a community. There's the once a year AGM where they really get to vote on things. Apart from that, the, the best they can do is sort of vote with their dollar by buying or selling stocks in the company, right? So DAOs Dow, sort of amalgamate those two with the community aspect and also allow for proposals and, and more voting powers and more voting frequency. Uh, and so, yeah, again, combines the two sort of concepts in a, in a positive some way, I'd say. Sorry, also, can I just make a point about early stage, right? Let's just make Go. this very clear yeah. that, for example, right, you know, invested in the company recently ourselves, which is smaller early stage, right, startup. And part of it, when it's small, uh, like the CEO there is very effectively taking advantage of his investors to form a bit of a community. By that, he goes to them for advice. He taps into their networks, right? So he, you know, through relationships with uh, me and then, you know, my dad became an investor. Then my dad's friend became an investor. So he's leveraging it to get more investment. Also to get the first users on the app he created, right? Leveraging that community. But also some people have come in and taken roles. So the creative director was, you know, one of the, was actually one of the first investors, her and her husband eventually joined the team, right? Because there was a, a hole to be filled and she was, you know, she was there, she had time and that was a good exchange. And I've done various things to help out. Oscar, you've done various things to help out a little bit here and there. And so when something's small, like if we invested in Facebook, you don't get that opportunity. 
But when you, when it's something like a startup where resources are stretched very thin, right? Any grassroots initiative always is, right? Resources, financial resources, especially are very precious. The community dynamic is the best tool to, to really maximize a very thin layer of material resources, right? And a startup and a company, like often people who work in startups will get kind of this vesting shares or sweat equity and stuff like that, where you don't actually have to put money in, but you can get to own a piece of the business, a bit of equity by contributing, right? An employee will get a salary, but they'll also get a bit of shares over time because they're helping get this thing off the ground. Maybe they're taking on the risk of less stable employment, something that might not be around in two years when they could go work at, in a more stable job. And it's going to create all this value in a very valuable company. So the whole concept in the startup world is you get a bit of equity for doing that. So that, that, that's where the concept exists now. This will be making it accessible to less sophisticated groups in a wider range of situations. But it is the same kind of concept, which is very exciting because it enables you a very flexible way of getting involved in very passionate projects you can be very passionate and interested about. Um, that you just find on the internet, right? You don't need to go through this formal process or know the right people necessarily. Um, there's easier ways to get involved and easier to set these up. But you're kind of blending some of the dynamics here between what theoretically publicly listed companies have. I know we're about to touch on this, what theoretically they have, but actually bringing it more into reality, we think. And then some of the concepts that work well in early stage startups um, but, but taking that, you know, uh, more flexible, available to more people, more democratized. So that, that is the really, I think, I know we're not talking even specifically about the technology just yet, but this is the actual, uh, from what we understand it, the fundamentals around it and the first principles understanding of it, which is the most valuable part as always. So I just want to clarify that. I don't know if you have anything else on that ask, but if not, free to free to move on but that's where we yeah. already see and understand these concepts yeah okay so in a nutshell convergence that will amplify positive sum games in society right you see all those concepts there there are i feel like uh DAOs don't have the as many limiting principles to these as public publicly traded companies do or, or any company or any company for that matter. Right. It's a lot more scalable. I will we'll get into like how scalable that really is, but yeah, you, as you can see, it, it touches on a lot of the same themes of a, of a company setup of a traditional company setup, but yeah, takes it to a, to a different level. Let's say any, anything else to add? Not for me, no. Cool. All right. So for the for the clear cut advantages, right? Less red tape. Use of blockchain instead of the financial regulators who impose regulations. We've got someone who wants to join. That's yep. good to okay. hear. Um, so less red tape, especially in the startup and like sort of young projects, is always a big plus, right? It, it's time and money that gets sunk into those, you know, those sorts of endeavors. I'll, right? I'll give so, a very personal example because yeah. I feel like this makes it real when we can, Mike, when I was doing nonprofit work and I know Kate's just joined and I know she did some stuff in Nepal as well. Um, we spent years and everyone here knows Gilly and that's where we first met Gilly and he was trying to help us overcome the red tape of running a charity, just trying to do grassroots work in one community in Nepal, right? With, with three or four people. And the red tape was the biggest killer. And we actually never actually sorted it out uh, over, over like three years. And it was the biggest, one of the biggest turnoffs of the nonprofit charity sphere, especially the charity sphere for, for me personally. And in the end, we actually shut it down. And it was part of the reason was the red tape. Just think about how powerful that is. So if there's something that can potentially overcome that thing, that the bottleneck that that opens up of uh, good intentioned work. So yes, yeah, so, I sorry, that's that's a big one, but easy to overlook. Yeah, huge, right? Uh, so there's more sovereignty, right? Self governance is probably the biggest sell of downs. Everyone, every stakeholder, uh, everyone involved, everyone who contributes 
has the opportunity to govern and have a say on the direction of the organization. But with that say, I'm curious, like how much, say, so if I've got like 2% or something in the, in the organization, like how much say do I realistically have? Like, how can I move? What, what, what's the main difference with say? Cause like a, an employee can have say. Yeah. Uh, so well, well, you're thinking okay. even the percentage terms ask, I think is going to be a bit different because yeah. with uh, say something like an NFT, right. Instead of you've got a share of a DAO that the language won't really work that way that much. It'll probably be more, you can increase your, um, your voting rights over time by participating mm -hmm. in these ways, for example. Okay. Secondly, you might have disproportionate, and I don't want to get complicated, but you might have like your voting rights and your say mm -hmm. might not be proportionate to your kind of the finan financial part of what you've invested in there. Mm. Right. Um, good example, you know, the people on this call, apart from Liam and me, right? Some of the most active constant students, right? Now they, they're probably, because of being so active, daily progress, showing up to events and all that, constant student is right for a DAO. And we'll talk about that at the end. These are people who might get disproportionately high say in what happens in the community, get put on a certain council or committee within mm -hmm. a constant student DAO where they get to make decisions about X, Y, and Z. And why is that, why is that good? that incentivizes people to participate and thrive in the community instead of it being like a luxury thing. Mm. Like, so oh, really there's reward. some tangible benefit I might get from being active in the community every day. It might be good for me long term. Yeah, so, so Joe, it really rewards that. Uh, it rewards effort and, and what people you can. What you can out. reward effort. It'll depend on how you set it up. Um, okay. But yeah, so you're not going to give, uh, you're not going to make them CEO-like powers Mm -hmm. they, they could work towards that in a way because mm -hmm. a lot of these people who set these up have the ambition of just stepping away completely too. So mm -hmm. there's that. Anything to add on that, Osk? Yeah, I'd say that most DAOs, uh, for most DAOs, there's an apparatus where you can have more voting power and more tokens through contributing, not just uh, yeah. investment. And also not all DAOs have to be governed by token support. It can be NFT where everyone has an equal uh, share. Those are a lot rarer though, I'd say. So the, the amount of like personal voting power you have definitely varies across the organizations naturally. Yeah. Uh, is that settled? Cool. All right. Incentive alignment. We, we went over that. So I think we can just yep. push past it for the large scale community. Okay. Communication is huge. Like I, I mentioned before, like I'm shareholder in a, a bunch of different companies. I really don't know how I can communicate with other shareholders except by sort of chasing down sort of uh, like, uh, off-brand forums and stuff like that. They're hard to find and uh, you can't really find track records on them, so on and so forth. DAOs uh, solve some of those problems, especially some of the smaller ones where you, you there's barrier to entry and you, you know the people who are involved, that, that definitely helps. Uh, and there is a huge, huge emphasis on communities and community building in the DAO space. It's seen as the pillar of the DAO. Yeah, um, very yeah. clear example. Um, and so, yeah, if it's not clear, a lot of them, we use Circle for Constant Student, but a lot of them use Discord. Pretty much all of them use Discord, the, the first versions or, or what is it, Signal or something. They and Telegram. Yeah. Telegram, yeah, and they communicate on there and voting and everything will happen in there and, and servers and stuff but you know i, I met someone who's setting up a dow recently on some other slack channel unrelated and uh you know he he's he's coming up with the concept but he was so excited it was a very cool concept about real estate right a dow about owning real estate which is kind of cool and he was excited that i i'd already been started working in community building because I go, oh, I've done the opposite. I've done, we've been working on the community building side. I haven't started the technical DAO side yet. And he goes, oh, well, you know, who cares? Like you got the community. That's the real thing. Like all the technical stuff can come if you don't have a community. So that's just how foundational 
the community building part of it is to this concept, which is very exciting yeah. for like anyone associated with constant student, for example. I'd say, yeah, without it, it's just like a, a company, really. Yeah. Like, there's no point in doing it, right? So yeah, pretty foundational. And the last one is accessibility, right? More accessible than raising capital, more incentives than traditional crowdfunding. Again, with the incentive alignment and, and the sovereignty, right? There are more people who are attracted and there's also a lower barrier to entry in terms of getting involved at the grassroots yeah. level. I just, I just want to make another point. Sorry, we, we glossed over this, but large scale community. We didn't talk about the large scale nature of it. And I guess like the points are that um, to ins people having ownership over something or a role to play in something helps people trust something more and also is more incentive to use it. Right? Like if you're yeah. invested, if you're invested in a company uh, that, um, you know, a particular app you use, but if you're also invested in the company, it's a bit more incentive to kind of use the app as well. So this is, this is a way to kind of, I think, incentivize people to kind of get on board with things as well, but also make it a more productive, bigger community. If people can have a say, if people can get, a, you know, financial like benefit or return out of it, it's a way to build these like better and maybe even scale the, the benefits, the many benefits of communities. Cause our social structures now don't really do that very well. Yeah. People actually have to spend, we're going to talk about this later. People actually, you know, modern life is almost forces you away from community. Yeah. In a lot of situations, cause you got to go work, make enough to pay rent, um, keep your job. Um, community building is a luxury. You fit in somewhere else in the, in the day. Whereas you really, uh, the tribal way was superior in that you actually were immersed in community based activities, like all the time, it's far superior mm -hmm. way of life. And that's a disconnect now. So this is interesting as a technology that can harmonize that. So I think that's worth mentioning too. Absolutely. Uh -huh. I know Liam's buzzing right now. We keep talking about communities <laughs> and tribes. <laughs> All right. Disadvantages. Uh, so consensus is probably the, the biggest problem, I'd say. Most huge uh, sort of undertakings by companies that have been transformational have been allowed to happen specifically because there was no consensus uh, mechanism, right? Biggest example off the top of my head is Apple, right? Everybody criticized Apple for closed system, not able to do as much as the other competitors. People inside Apple were, were against the vision of Steve Jobs that he had for their, their computing devices. Uh, and so, you know, if Apple or Cupertino was a, was a, a DAO, there's, there's no way that we'd have, well, it might've happened eventually, but uh, the democratization of personal computing definitely would have been slowed down. We can make it even clearer. If everyone got to vote on every decision made in Australia, what sort of decisions would get made? Right, people would yeah. get rid of tax. They'd vote to get rid of taxes, yeah. and then everything would collapse. Yeah, man, you don't want like YouTube trolls like voting yeah, yeah. where your company's going. You know, <laughs> yeah, company I, community. Yeah, it's not just company. That yeah, that exactly. becomes that definitely becomes a big problem where big, where there's low barrier to entry because that just means less curation, right? So it, it's a double edged sword. So yeah, you can definitely attract the wrong people. But then you, you also determine your filter with that. So you can have yeah, like- Yeah, you set it up how you want, correct. Exactly, yeah. So yeah, there's definitely safeguards against it. Most, like, I know the bankless DAO, they have to like subscribe to their, they have to pay a subscription to their other services and stuff. So they're well and truly part of the community, but others are just completely open. So there's, uh, there's definitely variance in approach. Mm. Uh, security is another problem, I'd say. Uh, you know, the, the moderators have to be sort of audited and a lot of the time they're not. So the, a big example would be uh, Time Wonderland, which is like this reserve currency DAO, 
right? It was, it was a pretty big story at the end of January where the treasurer Sifu, which is an alias, uh, was sort of found, um, found out to have had criminal activities under a different name and the, the, the value of the Dow just plummeted after that. Uh, so there's definitely a lot of problems around verification uh, in the community. Competitors can be a part of the communi community and sort of uh, instigate its downfall, you know, completely open systems allow for, for sort of illicit and also unethical behavior. Yeah, because like if so. it's not clear to anyone watching or here, uh, uh, NFTs, any Web3 crypto related projects, is very often the big theme is anonymity. People have some rubbish name and uh, some weird JPEG display picture, not a picture of their face like you have on social media normally or LinkedIn. And so this is where all this, obviously, if you don't know exactly who it is, it could be anyone. And there's been lots of problems with the treasury because all these things have treasuries, right? Like people buy the coin or the NFT, there's a collection of funds. So then that's a treasury and there's a, there's a constitution. Every DAO, right, has a constitution. And there's a treasury is meant to be dealt with a certain way for certain reasons. So this is a consequence that, you know, the treasurer is important and all yeah. that stuff. And there have been some... But it's like anything, you know, public, publicly traded companies also have scandals. Yeah, and absolutely. They, they um, release their statements, but there's a lot of creativity in accounting. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's, there's definitely uh, like other like insidious. Yeah. Yeah. Can you filter with that if people's names, like if you want to see people's names and ID check, you can't like enforce it that people have to go, oh, you have to put your real name when you come in? I mean, why not? Yeah, you can do you whatever can do, you want. Yeah. There's a Proof. term for it. There's a term yeah. for it called doxed in, in yeah. this world, which is like dox means your identity is transparent. Exactly, like Liam Hounsel dot eth is the yeah. person or something like that. Yeah, and uh, that's like you know. So some people are giving you advice: don't go into DAOs that don't have doxed mm -hmm. leadership, right? Like, Constitution is a good example of like a contrast because it's very transparent. Who we are. If we set up a DAO tomorrow. Obviously, we'd offer it to our community members, not to the open public. We've already vetted, you know, a large degree of the community members, right? We know exactly, we know a lot about them. We know the sort of person they are. We know where their incentives are, right? So we'd, we'd, be, we'd actually- I hope you agree, Pat and Kate. <laughs> <laughs> please, please indicate if I'm wrong, because we'd want to know before we say, but um, so we would be, you know, we'd have a lot of ease, but also, I'm, and I'm assuming- people would be confident in us executing it, you know, given that they've opted to be in the community, they've migrated to the new platform. We meet up, we're going to start meeting up in person. Um, that this would be like extremely rare, but high touch kind of DAO compared to a lot of these other ones, a constant yeah. student one. But you can see how that's creates, it's a sense of trust, right? Whereas if it's some random thing, it's like how the trust is uncertain. Last one, contribution dilution. Again, if you go back to time, like uh, it was worth over a billion dollars. If you're just entering at that point, realistically, there's not much influence you can have over the community. Even if you're like contributing as much as possible, the way you would have contributed to that one is you sim simply stake the token and you get yield on that token. And that's how you gain voting power. But you're also gaining it at the same rate as as all the other people that have been there before. So there's really there's a real ceiling to what you can do uh, if you're if you're entering later. I'd say like there is with anything. Yeah, it's least, like Twitter yeah. or Instagram. If you're going on there, like if you're early, you know you have more luck. If you're early on YouTube, it's easy to get your videos to get seen by more. If you come in late, you've got to work harder to stand out. Some of the existing ones won't even have a way of standing out because it'd be purely yeah. financial based contribution, mm -hmm. not like any creative contribution. Yeah. Cool. Hey, Oscar, I just had a question with the security sure. in, in the disadvantages. So, when, like, we were talking about the docs and like the identity check, uh, I don't know, the, well, I think, I feel like a my opinion like one of the advantages is that it can be like all anonymous i think that's like a attractiveness feature for 
know, this sort of space. Uh, yeah. Assuming that's yeah, assuming that's correct. Like, how like do you expect the security to be? I guess enhanced. Like, do you think these things will become necessary um, in like a lot of the space, or do you think it will sort of keep that anonymity? Uh, I'd say that it might become common to have like proof of identity, especially for like the moderator roles. Yeah. Uh, I think like, I think that's fair and like the development and the sort of the brains trust that's been elected. But even like, even if you're operating purely on anonymity, then you're really, you're not really judging people on what they've done in the past. Maybe you can track their wallets and what they've done, but you're, you're, you're judging them on the merits of, of their contribution to the project. So that's yeah. definitely an upside, True. I'd say. So yeah. It reminds like me of anything. like high school exams, how you had a student number, not your name. So it wouldn't influence like how your work was viewed. Yeah. yeah. But also I think of the example of like Reddit, where anonymity is very common, mm. unlike Instagram or LinkedIn, where anon anonymity is not common. And Reddit, the stakes are low, but also there's the, the advantages, but also Reddit, you know, some subreddits have filters, like you have to have commented or something, whatever it was before you can post and stuff like that. And what a lot of those things, none of those filters are perfect necessarily, but they are very good. Like it's the difference is, for example, another example is the difference between something like cost of student, which is a bit more of a filtered community or much more filtered community, one of the most filtered community or like some Slack that you can just click on the website and go straight in. Mm. You've got a whole heap of randoms. There's no, like, go start promoting your stuff. Like, it doesn't really matter. You got here easy. It doesn't really matter if someone removes you. Yeah. Or it's a bit different when you go through a lot of effort to get into something. You don't want to risk getting excluded. So those are the things. So I'm sure it'll be some combination of some will have a lot. Anonymity will be common. Maybe if you're a member, being anonymous is not as a big of a deal is if you're a leader, like Oscar said, if you're part of the yeah. moderators or the actual team, I imagine it'll be like that. And it would just be a big mixed bag, depending on the purpose of that DAO, the stakes, like how much there is to actually lose um, and, and all those kind of factors. Honestly, just like a community. In, that, in some communities, it's like being anonymous is fine. Some communities, transparency is like pretty essential. Yeah. But can you, you plug my podcast off of this? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're plugging the category and the category is really important. Like the base, uh, it's kind of like uh, the basic skill behind investing is not so much like understanding accounting as much as it is like identifying value and having good judgment. The base power behind DAOs is not um, oh, a new way to crowdfund or investing opportunity it's it's community building is what is actually at the base i think i think that's probably why a lot of the current iterations will probably fail yes uh like the just an inability to actually understand the fundamental value of of DAOs. yeah Le uh, liam is in a better position than a lot of most of the people who have DAOs. Yeah. To actually execute on a DAO, for example. Yeah. Like I'm saying, someone with a community, strong community building yeah. hat. Without any sort of technical knowledge yeah. of how to construct these things. Yeah. Because the technical yeah. is not that complicated, actually. Really. Yeah. It's not. But uh, yeah. It, like you, you're probably seeing right now, like a bit of a DAO bubble, right? It's a bit trendy. Yeah, like the internet was in 2000. And when TikTok started. Yeah. Yeah. Like think things will pop and the, the cream will rise to the top in terms of uh, sort of organizations that actually took care of this. Um, have you got a couple of examples? Like who, what are some of the best DAOs that you've seen take place? Well, the... Are they coming later, Os? Just so we don't jump yeah. the gun. Yeah, we do have other, we have examples, but in terms of pure community, we haven't really gone into it. I haven't seen anything Examples. that is as, put it this way, not to keep blowing our own horn, but I haven't seen anything as sophisticated as what, like I say, a constant student DAO would look like. Yeah. Or a Gillage DAO would look like, Liam. 
Um, a lot of them are much simpler. There are some that have very noble causes and there's probably some of the most inspiring ones. Yeah. But um, nothing that has, or apart from maybe the example Oscar of white GG. Yeah, that's, that's true. Apart from that. Yeah. I, I think anything with a powerful cause, a, a community thing becomes a lot easier. Yes. But uh, in terms of the, like the finance realm, I'll go back to Time Wonderland. They were known as having the strongest community. They're called the Frog, Frog Nation. They still are. It's still going. But it, like, it's compared to like an actual community setup, it wasn't impressive, really. Yeah. It was just like buzzwords and Discord and that was pretty much it. Yeah. And as soon as it got tested, it became pretty fractious as well. So not, not done well, especially, especially with the financially motivated, motivated DAOs, I'd say. Cool. All right. Yeah, I think we nailed the importance of community. So yeah, applications. All right. All right. Invest and participate, future of work, create a DAO. Pretty simple. Okay. So first upside is like, is developing the skills of proposing strategies and persuasion and of and coordinating large cohorts of people. If you, if you wanna build a proposal, you really need to have rich discussions with people in, in the sort of the community apparatus. And, and yeah, you, you need to have a, an intimate knowledge of what you're doing before you actually propose what you're going to propose. Uh, it, you can definitely get found out by putting, putting crap up, which people do. Uh, so intelligent solutions, community backing, getting that on board, getting that on side, definitely a skill that you can develop for a low barrier to entry. Uh, so I think that's pretty powerful. Any examples of this, Osk, to make it a bit more tangible? Okay, well, this, the logo you see here is Olympus Dow, and they're, they're sort of the, the godfather of uh, like rebase tokens, and they're, they're basically all designed to become the global reserve currency. Okay. And a lot of them right now are running into trouble with, uh, with how hyperinflationary they are. They're not really preserving the value of their tokens. So they're going through a lot of... So to definance this a little bit, I'm just conscious yeah. of financial literacy and economic literacy. Um, you know, the US dollar acts as a pretty big, you know, global, correct me if I'm wrong, global kind of reserve currency now. Yes. Obviously, we know that crypto and all that, there's going to be new attempts at being global currencies instead of the US dollar. Yeah. This is one. And long story short, hyperinflate, blah, blah, blah. It's, yeah. it's, it's very difficult economics to manage if it's fluctuating, yeah. going up too fast and all that. So just to make that clear. So come back, bring that back to this point around the opportunity to invest and participate in DAOs. All right. Well, now what's happening is these projects are getting flooded with proposals and there's a lot of sort of dilution over... Oh, what is a proposal? Dilution. Sorry? Um, someone doesn't know what proposal is. Proposal is basically uh, like... A, uh, an someone initiative. Suggesting? You, yeah, someone suggesting it. Anyone can do it given they meet certain criteria. So it's like someone giving an idea to constitute, but us yeah. getting flooded with them. Like, yes. do this sort of call, do this sort of call, do this sort of call, do this sort of yeah. call. Yeah. yeah. Okay, got it. They get flooded with them, and there's not a lot of clarity over the, the future direction, whether they're actually going to change up their overall goal uh, of becoming a reserve currency or just turning into basically a VC. And so the incentive yeah. to participate in something like Olympus Dow would be, ah, oh, this, there's a case here. These people are good. They look like they'd have a good shot at creating this kind of reserve currency. Yeah. I'd like to invest in that. It's almost like being able to invest in the U S dollar when it was being created or something. Yeah. Someone said, just, we're going to create this new free country. Um, we're going to, you know, be big on whatever they're big on trade and American dream. And then we're going to probably have a, and, and you being able to go, oh, yeah. anyway, it's like an opportunity to invest in a project like that. Yeah. Yeah. So what the, this is an example of sort of what not to do almost with this. 
because again like this being done well hard to find right now it's a new concept and dows are sort of in bedlam right now they're not doing too good yep. so the best i can do there trust me all right big upside is becoming more intellectually involved in your investments all right opportunity to become a more active investor like you see with those vcs and, and famous angel investors right become a chance to be a, a fractional ceo i like that word <laughs> um, and yeah again putting your fate in your own hands is is definitely a big upside that you don't get from publicly traded companies all right on the right we have juice box here that's more for creating your own DAO, but on the left is snapshot. That's what you're going to see here. And this is this is all about like uh, viewing and creating your own proposals. This is what it looks like. Most of the DAOs use this on snapshot.org. Right? You can you can browse, you can join clear clear voting system and so, so what's the right what's, what are we looking at on the decentraland one you've got the runix coin mining land yeah so locations so those people in the community making yeah. proposals or what is that yes these are people in the community making proposals here all right and this is the runix coin mining land uh proposal in depth if you actually want to vote on it Okay. You can view the detailed proposal. It's very long, so I didn't put the whole thing in. But this is this is what it looks like, right? If people want to familiarize themselves. And again, depends. There is usually a barrier to entry on who can actually propose things. Uh, sometimes it's an approved author list. Other times it's you have to own a certain amount of the of the token, right? So that definitely varies depending on the constitutions of the downs, but this definitely helps you sort of build a track record and, and having a say in, in the future direction of, of the organization that you believe in, right? Which is the best reason to invest in a project. Yeah. You, believe yes, in and you come back to your fractional CEO point, because to make sure it's clear, you know, a lot of people invest in startups or something like say a Tim Ferriss or a Naval Ravikant or something like that. A lot of them will actually be advisors, you know, they can share their expertise with the CEO, actually boost the company's chances of succeeding, right, financially. Whereas when we go invest in, a, I don't know, Crown or Qantas or Amazon or whatever, obviously we don't get that interface. Whereas this is, uh, I guess, even more exciting if you yeah. can contribute in a way. And then the more intimate, I guess, the more contribution you can have. If it's 10,000 members, yeah. you'd have to really earn a place to have a larger voice, obviously. Uh, something else I'd like to add, as someone who's been in shares and angel investing and we're starting to do DAO stuff now, investing in them, incredible incentive to actually check this daily and sort of not let it fade away into the background of your life <laughs> as opposed to shares. Is shares, it's you, you kind of accepting that a lot of your fates are not really in your hands and you're sort of just believing blindly almost in management until a, an announcement comes out and that's when you really shift. This one, uh, discussions on the community every day, right, uh, which moderators actually pay attention to, which, you know, public companies don't really have that relationship or that function. And again, there's the tangible proposals. Okay, so I think if you if you want to develop the skill of investing and what like a, a successful uh, a successful I don't know process of uh, sort of developing having, a project having a position, design, yeah, like having a, have an opinion on what's going to drive more value exactly, and seeing that hypothesis either come to fruition or not. Yeah, and then yeah, you'll get a, a much stronger learning feedback loop uh, than a, a publicly traded company, and you'll also get a quicker and less downside averse feedback feedback loop than angel investing, which is also a high barrier to entry. So win win there. Hmm. That's a good point. Just a question with uh, so those forums. 
So is the if I'm like another person on that forum, am I only able to vote? Is that the only like system where I can interact or is there like a like, comment, like that sort of stuff? Uh, so there's two forms of government getting somewhat technical. There's off-chain, right? And that's where, that's sort of like Discord discussions, mm. uh, like the telegrams, the signals, mediums, right. Twitter. And then there's on-chain, which is what we're looking at here. This is a, this is like a Web3 website uh, where you, where this is like the final uh, decision on proposals. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So can people go directly like on the on-chain or do they have to go through the off-chain and then it sort of gets onto the on-chain? To, uh, no, you can go directly on-chain. In fact, yeah. I did when I started doing this. Nice. Uh, yeah. And you can, you can vote without going off-chain. So yeah. Yeah, no, no dramas. Cool. Okay. Another element to this, uh, kind of touched on it, building reputation and track records. Okay, your your actions are, are traceable, especially with the on-chain governance, where you know it, that's linked to your wallet address. All right. So the voting history, the proposals, eventually getting jobs within the DAO community. Right. That that's all recorded and. Low, low barrier to entry in terms of contribution, but definitely high leverage in terms of, of, uh, of making a case for future opportunities, I'd say. So for example, there's something that excites the hell out of me with a, with a potential constant student DAO, and maybe we set up a, a DAO and we can invest in community members' projects, right? And you can, you can potentially track the behaviors of people making good proposals for projects to back, um, potentially like helping contribute to those projects to say, Kate's got a project. Pat says, Hey, we should invest in Kate's project for these, these reasons. Um, you know, Pat's helping Kate's project out. He gets a kind of track record. Maybe he does that three times. It's like, Oh, Pat's had like three really good proposals and, and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and then his stock is kind of rising within this one ecosystem and Kate's very grateful. Like, as far as I'm aware, not, I don't think I'm being too naive. I think things like that will be very realistic. Yeah, absolutely. Which is very exciting. Yeah, I like, yeah, we had the idea for the social token, right? Which is basically what this is, but we were so excited about the prospect of that like a year ago. And now it's just so easy to do now, which is good, you know? So yeah, I'm definitely excited about this element. Uh, hey, I'm, I'm curious, how do you two think you would use it potentially with your travel and then the organization that you're doing? Have, have any ideas come to mind so far? Uh, for like an investing DAO, which is what I want to do, mm -hmm. it'd be good to be able to link like uh, feedback and participation in the community to uh, to like for token rewards, or that that would be hard to do right now. Another thing I'm thinking of is having like a bunch of sub DAOs and they're, they're all like, like competing against each other and like a fake trading game or a demo trading game that you see. Um, so, like, so sub DAO, what would that? It's would like that... a subreddit. Yeah, yeah, so it's like, umbrella. yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's like um, so Pat, Pat's, Pat's, got a, Pat's got a constant student sub DAO with people who are like in Pat's mini community within constant student and okay. Kate's and Kate's got one. Kate's yeah. got, you know, whatever young, young women in, in STEM. Cause she's like a growing thought leader in that. Oh, and so they're, they're all part of her sub DAO, but mm -hmm. maybe they're also part of the community building sub DAO that Liam runs kind of like you could be in more than one subreddit, but it's all within the umbrella of constant constant students. So you can start partitioning off self governing arms, like a local council within a city almost so you can make a lot of those decisions that relate to you and your group within the overall um you know like reddit is obviously really big reddit's like the basic platform that enables all these various interest-based threads to just veer off so that's 
sub DAOs is like a whole other thing. Yeah. This, this is a very big. Yeah. Yeah. Innovation. Let's not get into it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's sufficient for now, but yeah. go on. Oscar. And uh, uh, did you yeah. talk about the point of getting jobs within the DAO community? Have you done that? That, that will go more into that later. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, pretty much right now. Future of work, the second element, right? Participating and contributing to DAOs. So we've, we've spoken about the ideal of, of constant student, right? We, we went over barista bros in the previous workshop on NFTs and how they sort of act as, like, as voting powers uh, for a, a, a coffee shop in New York, I yeah, think. Yeah, they, they set up like it's, if anyone knows, very quick recap, if anyone knows GoFundMe and other crowdfunding platforms, they essentially did the same thing, but you're going to have an NFT that pertained. Also, one each one of these is an NFT. These image, these little images, and you were going to like. So basically, you're investing in this coffee shop being created. You're crowdfunding it, but you get a small part of this community, right? You get a tangible ownership part in this coffee shop's community, and you get co coffee perks over time, right? I think they probably give you a discount or free coffees, uh, but also I think they might, you know, maybe. I don't know what else they do, but they might even like, oh, we're designing a new website, you know, vote on the color or I don't know. There's all these things that you could potentially do with that in the ongoing community of a crowd. Whereas normal crowdfunding and Kickstarter, it's kind of like, yeah, I've given this gift and now I'm just waiting and seeing how it goes. This is like yeah. a great way to keep people very involved. As for a fucking coffee shop. Yeah. It's insane. <laughs> it's so cool. Uh, and uh, on the right, that's YGG, Yield Guild Gaming. And just as a, a brief description of what a guild is, in a crypto game where you have to sort of buy NFTs or like characters in the game, you obviously have to pay money for those. Instead of paying money, Yield Guild will rent you these characters for free and they get a share of the income that you earn in these games. Okay. And the DAO uh, is sort of like a share in that project and that big focus on community. And they're also a good example of sub DAOs, right? So one of the sub DAOs will be a specific game, Axie Infinity. The other, another sub DAO will be, uh, I don't know, Decentraland, you know, that's another sort of game, thing. basically. Yeah, yeah, another game. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Here, here it is. Small community roles that you can pick up in the community. These are these are listed on various different websites, and there there are clear delineations. But marketing is huge, software development is huge, uh, community moderators, right? There's there's a lot of transferable skills from sort of the legacy world to the Web three world, uh, and again, low like new rising space so there'll be lots of rising job opportunities in the future and you'll get rewarded in, in in the native token and have growing influence over that DAO, which is great so, so like a constant, yeah. constant student DAO, right people who are really involved in the community are happy to do things like jump on calls with new members or run workshops or you know, there's so many ways to like contribute, or like, I don't know, run coaching sessions, uh, uh, like very limitless kind of possibilities within our, because what we have is very diverse and I guess higher touch. Like you could actually very easily make a very simple system within a DAO to actually start giving people, for example, constant student coins. So, you know, a lot of people are happy to volunteer out of love. If we can give people the financial um, benefit of being involved too. Um, it just it's easier to kind of f for people to focus on things and allocate more time towards it. And I think this will open up a lot of roles that are um, very unconventional because often I think the biggest thing I've learned last year is that a lot of what comes naturally to people doesn't align with this very neat, well-paying job in the in the everyday world. You know, some people are really amazing cheerleaders. Um, what's, what's a kind of role in society for someone who's like very, just very supportive of people and always very willing to help them out. Whereas all these community manager roles and sub roles. So yield your games, they have community managers who help people who are joining this gaming world. They help set them up onboard them. 
right? This is how you go. And they actually have an agreement with the overall guild. So think about subreddit again. It's like they're a subreddit manager, but they get 20% of the revenue. The player gets 70% of what they make. And then the overall guild, so like Reddit in this example, gets 10% back. So got all this potential for these people to have very meaningful work. Uh, in Yield Guild games, I guess, hopefully helping them have a fun way to make income that's very accessible wherever you are. It's helped a lot of people in the Philippines during COVID and stuff. Like literally Philippine, like Filipino workers, unemployed, learning crypto gaming to make an income. It's just like crazy. Um, yeah. but very useful. And then you think about like, what could that look like in something like concert student or a similar kind of community is even more powerful because there's even more utility, I would argue behind, you know, all the, all these things related to meaningful work, um, you know, championing your own ideas in the world, not waiting to contribute, not having to go learn more stuff before you contribute, like learning while you contribute and doing it in a supportive environment. Um, there's so many, there's so many possibilities. It really opens up a lot of, you know, good, good roles, I think, for people. All right. This sort of, uh, sort of is a continuation of that, getting rewarded for engagement, right? We, we spoke about the two sort of denominations of, of your contribution, NFTs or tokens, right? Tokens can usually accumulate NFT, you the the quantity of tokens will accumulate, and their value is preserved. All your NFTs, uh, their the value of those NFTs, probably the floor price or something like that, uh, will increase, right? So that that's sort of the the reward incentive, and that is uh, that's granted to you because you because of effective contribution to the community, right? So on the left is Hector Dow, and they're, they're one of the, the forks or the, the copy and pastes of Olympus, right? And the, the income you get is from staking that coin and being a long-term investor, right? They, they suck you in with like great annual yields, right? Which compound almost daily or more than daily. And for providing that system with sort of liquidity and sort of this uh, like long-term commitment to the reserve currency, uh, that they reward you with the token. We dived into yield your games. So I think, I think we're good on that, unless there are any questions. Uh, is, this, me, is this clear? This might be confusing for people. Yeah. So ask questions if you are. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, I have three uh, free question about the streams, I guess related to like how the voters, voting system stuff uh, works. Is that a like for tokens or NFTs? Uh, can the uh, the people who like stake the coins and who invest can they have a choice in whether they can do tokens or NFTs, or is it completely like a business decision, or is it more like community uh, to decide? Decide. I think I think it's dependent on how the DAO is set up. Okay, I'd so say, yeah. not one or the other. Yes, yeah. yeah, so if we're doing it for yeah, one or the other, usually. we could decide. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to manage some complicated economic system with tokens. Yeah, we'll yeah. just give people NFTs. And so, uh, if if constitution's way more well known in a couple of years, and there's more community members, you know, this NFT will be worth way more that you're holding, Pat, or something like that. You yeah, know? that's what okay. we're backing on. Yeah. Very much democratic. Yeah. Yep, but tokens is also another option. And a lot of, you know, there'll be a combination of both. Some will use one, not the other. Some will use both. Yeah, I'd say like using both as a voting system, probably not a big future for. But there are definitely projects that incorporate both uh, as income streams. But in terms of pure voting power, it's usually one or the other. I haven't seen an example of both. Thank you. Okay. And investing in community projects, you know, enjoying the democratized returns of, of the people and constant student, right? Pat's next project, Lane's project, my projects, hopefully. Uh, that's probably being able to invest in the community 
and enjoying those returns together. Probably yeah, well, almost like one. we had a. It's almost like saying we had a constant student fund. Yeah, where everyone got. If you buy into the fund, everyone gets a certain share, and what the fund is investing in is maybe you know eighty percent of it is projects of people in the community helping to fund their projects. It's almost like a community coming together to help. Uh, you know, um, in in the city of Sydney, coming together to support projects by people in the city of Sydney, like keeping it local. Maybe twenty percent is outside, you know, like like a fund. It's actually like a simpler way to actually set up <laughs> a kind of fund. And you know, yeah. the, the the arguments against that normally from I guess normally from older people would be concerns around like um, you know, uh, are you comp is someone who's running this? Are they competent enough to be doing it and stuff like that? And that's normally objections from people who are older who still come from the world of very permission-based things and where's your qualifications and stuff. Whereas I think the reality we're shifting to is obviously like, um, you know, I, I guess like you can, with all these concepts, especially within crypto, it's just about proof of, proof of work. And it's about, um, you know, people having the capacity now and that when you localize things, you get better outcomes, actually. Like when you actually really know the people and you can support them doing their projects, they're, they're more likely to succeed in like a constant student. That'd be very specific to constant student example, rather than a random group of internet people that just invest in each other's projects. If we actually kind of still collaborate, it's, it's like bringing that alignment of community objectives closer together. We all kind of do that anyway. You know, people are happy to help Lockie. People are happy to help... Athena with the title of her YouTube video, support Matt when he's starting his vlogging or he's kicked, whatever it is. And you know, everyone's kind of happy to support anyway, but you know, I'm, I'm sure there'll be many examples of very intimate online plus in-person communities who use the DAO thing to simplify the ability to support very directly and in more ways, one another's projects It's huge capacity for shaping the future of how we work because there's so many things that people would love to do they just don't do because they're on their own yeah this is an incredible vehicle to do things in a connect like as a community instead of on your own it's major you know yeah big big upside like best example of that is Robbie with with this or this huh maybe I'll call it but you know his his main motivation right now he was telling us is not letting the people who put their faith in him and their money with him down right the social accountability factor uh, it in sort of in like imagine it with this concept it is huge huge incentive to get started huge incentive to follow through on things that's why the community element's so important with the DAOs. so you know people should really be building the community first before they before they actually create the DAO. yeah it's true it's kind of like building an audience before you launch a product yeah it's like the equivalent yeah well it's a good segue so next <laughs> Next, uh, next concept, right? So starting a company, right? This is what you're, this is what you're faced with, all right? Have a read of that. I'm not going to go through it all, but there's a lot of uh, sort of obstacles uh, with starting companies. Did I even put in red tape and compliance? No, I didn't. No. That's a huge one. Well, you know how much I hate that. Yeah, yeah. Operating costs kind of under that. But best solution for that, right, is creating a DAO and sort of uh, sharing the workload, uh, sharing the, the, uh, the ownership burden and the social responsibility, right? And these are the things that you have to focus on, right? What, what's the mission? Building the community, figuring out the, the economics of the token, how the governance, that's the, the voting power, how that's going to work. And that's sort of your constitution, right? And then ownership is NFTs versus uh, normal tokens, really. 
that's what you decide. There's a lot more in-depth stuff uh, about that on Bankless. I've got an article coming out on, on this pretty soon, in the next couple of days. Uh, anything to add, Jay? No, so just making it clear to restate what he yeah. said, that those are the five elements typically of a DAO, and that comes from a Bankless article. So if like anyone's going to make one, they're kind of the five things basically to sort out. Yeah, and these are the platforms that you can create your own on. This is Juicebox. That's Aragon. I should have put labels. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but, is this, uh, they're, is this they're the last slide? Because I think even just scrolling through Juicebox's website is a pretty good... Yeah, this is the last like new piece of content. It's just a recap. Okay, so let's let's just go to that site now. Then. Yeah. So it was site? Yeah. Aragon. Aragon, yeah. 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 Uh, let's go. Let's stop sharing for a second. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah, when what do you think the timeline is? So I know you guys said long term and it's hard to predict, but like how how long until you see, say for us, Joe, how long until you see like us adopting it with constant streaming? Well, with constant streaming, you could really start it whenever you want. We could I'd do it say we want really. Uh, we need, people like need the, to have wallets, crypto yeah, wallets, and stuff like that. Onboarding's a problem. So it's that's not always the fun process of setting that up initially because mm -hmm. there's costs involved in starting that off it's going to be a hundred couple hundred so there's 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 those sort of things um it's literally just when we would decide to do yeah. it we certainly have enough the community is robust enough as it is exactly right now to, to do it apart from just the risk of adding a layer of complexity mm -hmm. boom all right, let's click some buttons. Uh, create your DAO. Yeah, taken. Well, Oscar, actually, if I, yeah. if I may. What do you, this yeah? Is, this is how you create one. Yeah. I'd love for you to bring up Juicebox and show them okay. examples of DAOs. Well, yeah, Juicebox is like a directory and a creator one. Uh, just for you guys, projects. All right, so you can use this site to set up one and list it. Uh, so this that is one, a pretty big one. Click that one. Yeah. Everyone heard of Julian Assange? Mm -mm. The the whistleblower, like in, uh, they put him in prison now. It was WikiLeaks. If you ever yeah, heard the of WikiLeaks, WikiLeaks guy. Yeah. Yeah, they put him in prison. He's in, uh, prison because, he's in yeah. Excel for a long time. He released all this sensitive information. So this DAO has been set up to try and raise funds and work towards the mission. See you, yeah. Kate. Yes, Kate. Uh, the mission of like funding his legal, it says it right there, obviously. Yeah. But his legal fees to, to yeah. fight. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's a mission. He's very well known. So, this is something that would get it. If you're on an example of one that started and ended, the Constitution Dow, the, the, con the US Constitution was, yeah, was put up for auction recently. Uh, and they, these people were trying to buy it, but they, they actually got outbidded, unfortunately, but they were raising money to, to buy it. Uh, it didn't work out, so they just returned all the raised money back to the, the investors, right? Unfortunate, you know, not, not, not every project's a win, but it's done in good faith. It's, just, it's, it's like Kickstarter yeah. in that um, if, if it doesn't succeed, the, the money just gets sent back to you. Yeah. So it's pretty low risk. Yeah. Yeah, even like uh, someone's talking about like all the, all the finance DAOs that are doing pretty bad right now. They all have huge treasuries that actually uh, are worth way more than the, the actual market cap of the token. So if there was ever like a, a liquidity event where the investors get paid out, like they, they will get most of their investment back so that, that's a great part of DAOs. uh publicly listed companies their market cap can go above 
uh, can go below sort of the net asset value of the company, but the investors don't really have a, a very tangible right to that. And there's sort of different tiers for shareholders. DAOs are pretty good in that they're, they're more secure in guaranteeing you some of your money back, I'd say. Powerful. Yeah. So yeah. Wow. Anything else you want to visit here, Joe? Or? I've heard of Shark Dow before. Just click on that one quickly. I think this is just a financial one from memory. They're buying, are they buying, they're snapping up NFTs. Is that it? Uh, At the top, it says they're trying to snap yeah, up it, it says, yeah, they're speaking their own language here. So you're going to have yeah. to go on the actual. Yeah. No, I don't want to put some on. No, no, no. I'm not going in there. Do we bother? All right. No, nah, don't, don't worry. Okay, cool. But I guess the point is you can see it, like there's transparency there on that platform. Yeah. So like what's in their treasury, how much is in their treasury, how yeah. much is in the wallet. And that's a platform any of us can use very quickly and set up a DAO. Mm -hmm. uh, especially one that you wanted to make open to, to lots it's of like people. having a directory, you know, it's like it could be discovered there in theory, but you just still have to have a marketing campaign and all that. Mm -hmm. All right, back here. Okay. Ask. Final recap. We got the Muggle World examples there and how the, the, the incentive alignment between sort of creator and owner. Well, first, there's a barrier between the two, especially the, like the user-generated content companies and how that sort of relationship dilutes over time. Uh, as they sort of scale up, that's the tribal govern governance factor, right? The accountability is smaller, the distance is greater. Uh, so the, the, the immediate profit motive takes over, uh, takes precedence over the long-term vision and sort of the, the core values of the company, right? They, they neglect the community and chase the bottom line, All right? Pretty simple stuff. And the applications we just went over, invest and participate. The future of work, uh, sort of earning through contributing to the to the communities and the DAOs, or to the hopefully they're both, uh, and obviously the opportunity to create your own and uh, and sort of chase down your own cause and set up that ecosystem yourself, which as we emphasise, community is at the heart of for sure. So yeah, that, that's that's the presentation. Thank you very much, Ross. That's great. Thanks very Thank much, Ross. Thank you guys for coming. And yeah. Kate. And Kate. Yeah. yeah. Right. So questions slash ideas. Obviously, something that's like, you know, um, you can stop sharing screen, Ross. Um, something that's very, you know, constant students very primed for, um, obviously, um, in, in many respects. Yeah. Joe, uh, do you think with it with Circle, they almost have an automatic uh, integration? Like Circle will almost develop its own um, juice box. That's I'm, I'm, I'm assuming Circle will develop some capacity. I haven't seen anything in any of their material that suggests it's going to happen. Circle yeah. as a company, so because we're recording it, Circle is the platform we use to host the cost student community. It's definitely the best in general community product on the market now not necessarily for Web3. Discord is more popular for Web3. Mm -hmm. I'm not big on Discord myself. Even I understand even though it's the platform of choice, the actual technical, it's not even that sophisticated really how it's being used. As Oscar said, most of it's off chain. Yeah. Like I think it's just there, people are used to using Discord for- I think, yeah, we were talking about Discord the other day and how like moderating uh, people's like, like what they put on there, it's a bit easier than circle right. or, it, or circle can't do it at all. Really. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you'd have to like kick them off completely. I'm assuming cause circle is quite progressive and they're, they're pretty good at shipping new features. They're kind of like notion. They've always got like cool new features coming out at pretty good pace. So they're a pretty impressive company with their product roadmap. And I'm just assuming that they're going to start factoring this in. Mm. Um, but I have no indication when that will happen. And this is why I'm not really in a rush uh, for constant student. Like Oscar and I have a particular philosophy around investing. We're not Warren Buffett or Navarro Avakan or anything to, for anyone to have seen the results of it yet. 
but it's typically like we're acting fast by not not jumping in is actually mm-hmm. acting fast in a way anything like this starts as a big craze as a fad you've seen it with nfts you've seen it with bitcoin you've seen it in tiktok mm-hmm. you know there's there are some advantages to being early but also when you what you're doing doesn't have thought and substance behind it when you're just trying to get on a craze for the sake of it and be early for the sake of it instead of having a reason to get in there early um that's where you don't really capture the full value mm-hmm. so for example there are some advantages of not rushing are that circle as a platform could evolve and make it easier. Yeah. Okay. Um, to track, to track and attribute behaviors on the platform to rewards. Yeah. For example. Do you think it will be easier to start just to have, I guess you had NFTs and tokens, but just to incentivize people purely with NFTs is probably. Perfect example. Yeah. Perfect example. Yep. So, you know, it's something like if I'm playing this kind of just brainstorming, one thing might be you join constant student. First thing you do is you create your own NFT, mm. right? And then someone from the community, then you offer your community, your NFT is probably a pretty cool idea and probably a really good onboarding experience, maybe Liam, but you offer your NFT to the community when you do the introduction. I think you should include an exponential careers. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, like you can, you can drop it in the introduction scene where you introduce yourself and drop your, I don't know, drop your first NFT. Like it's not going to, like, it's not going to necessarily be worth a crazy deal, but opportunists like myself and Oscar who focus on optionality, probably, you know, figure if we snap up a hundred, 10 of them have probably become a worth a mint and, and be very worthwhile. So, you know, people who care, who want to do this sort of thing, probably going to you know, go somewhere. And that's, that's very interesting, you know? And then if, if they do that, then they've crossed the biggest hurdle is actually people setting up their wallets. Yeah, I know. I believe that's it. The, I was, that's I was the biggest hurdle. To, I was talking to this with Pat in the car, actually, because he's at, um, he's helping people with investments throughout the day. <laughs> so, oh yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Quite Huge classic, yeah. 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 It's, it's the friction it's, to, it's a process system. What was especially, yeah. yeah, especially like um. So the way it actually works is actually good to bring up. Uh, so you have like the cryptocurrency layer, and then you have the token layer. So usually you have to buy Ethereum for that network for that network, and pay fees to be part of the constant student DAO, which is built on Ethereum. So barrier to entry there in terms of transaction fee, and also things of like liquidity between the two uh, like currencies and stuff like that is actually a huge headache to figure out. And that would be your biggest challenge in terms of onboarding people. Mm. Um, so it's going to cost them money to just be part of it. That like there's sunk costs and mm. also like things like bridging and swaps and decks and, and like all this DeFi sort of um what do you call it? Jargon and sort of logic hard for people to get their head around. I mean, it was hard for me. Like Joey was right next to me when I was doing this stuff initially. And it was like the most frustrating thing I'd done in a while, probably since my uni exams. Um, And uh, yeah, it it was a process. And like this, this sort of system was built for someone like me. So I can't even imagine how, how mind numbing it, it would be for other people to have completely no guidance. So we should provide yeah, Liam, look at, look at like the process of migrating people. Yeah. Just, just <laughs> yeah. From our that on top of like NFTs. And then th- this is definitely harder. Way more. Entering, it's like, it's like opening a fucking foreign bank account. Pardon my yeah, yeah. for swearing. It's, it's worse like, than that, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, exactly. So, that's actually the funny enough the, the biggest hurdle. But conceptually, what we could do is mm. so exciting and, and appealing. But unless you can actually make the process fun and smooth, mm. the, the level of reward on the other side often is not proportionate to the amount of effort people are willing to put into trans. It's like setting up a website. Like, oh, you know how valuable it is to set up a website when you don't know how to build a website. You have to go through the process. Mm-hmm. Even there's so much value to actually doing it or starting your podcast or whatever, you know, if the friction's friction, 
it, mm-hmm. it's enough to ho- hold you back. And that's actually the biggest obstacle. So the other thing I'm assuming as we, as time goes on, the, the onboarding and the wallets and all that stuff, I'm assuming that also improves because I don't see it getting worse. In the yeah. same way, accessing the internet in the year 1999 versus accessing the internet in 2015 or something, or, or when we've got uh, data on our phones and you can hotspot and all this sort of stuff that just, you know, technology d- democratizes over time. So I wouldn't rush. Those would be some of the biggest reasons, the complexities we'd then have to manage. Yeah, that, that, whole, that's a, a great, system. it's a great thing to have. It's, it's the main barrier to entry is the friction because the friction inevitably, like throughout history, as you were saying, has just gotten it's like shorter and exactly. shorter. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like you want to be early on a, with a long term time mm-hmm. frame in mind, not early with a short time frame in mind and getting caught up in the excitement of new possibilities. Yeah. The, the first person with a 20 year plan intentionally thought out will, will kill it. But um, like that, that's the first mover advantage. The first mover advantage isn't just creating one, really. Cool. Thank you, guys. I'm going to jump off. Fair enough. I to ask Joe. Pat. Yeah, no problem. All good, Yeah, Pat. great conversation. Yeah, yeah. all good. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, right. we could have Gilly as our guinea pig here. <laughs> we can fun. do it anyway. That's a bit, yeah. Uh, Teaching a 73 year old. That's a bit different. Uh, we'll cross that bridge when it comes. <laughs> getting getting his wallet set up is getting people uh, on Zoom is hard enough sometimes. Yeah, so. If we do it through uh, through eToro, I'll get all the referral. referral <laughs> yeah. and we're good. Great double, chat, guys. Double dipping. Uh, thanks, Pat. <laughs> thanks, Oscar. Thanks, Oscar. Awesome. Yeah. So, recap Oscar's. We've got a recording podcast oscarweeby.com the podcast yeah. is called the weatherman spotify youtube yeah. apple podcast if you, yeah places. if you if you look up my name in google the we'll weatherman have it, we'll have it we'll have it yeah. in the notes we'll have it in the yeah. notes the yeah. links all good all right thank cool. you very much all right.